what's going on y'all this is stevie with another episode of project wine and in this episode i'm going to be talking about promises now i won't be going into the syntax or the api of promises themselves so if you need to learn that i posted some links below for you to check out and i highly recommend that you uh, refresh on those before you get started with this episode but here i want to talk about an important concept that i felt think a lot of people seem to gloss over when they first learn and use promises and that is that promises are not just syntactic sugar they are not just callback aggregators sure they make your asynchronous code a little easier to read and a little bit easier to reason about but that is not the core and crux of why promises were built rather promises were built to solve a problem that happens when you write async code and that is called the inversion of control when you use code that requires callbacks, you are essentially inverting control of your program to somebody else. You are expecting that the person who receives your callback is going to use your callback properly. And when you're doing that, you're placing a lot of trust and that on that person that receives your callback. All right, let's dive into an example to better illustrate this. So let's say that I'm an engineer for a sick e-commerce store. We're blowing up. We have tons of revenue. It's a hot company. Plus we use machine learning and shit. So you should definitely invest. But at the same time, I heard about this really cool library from Stripe that will help me fix a problem that I've been having. And that is to verify payment information. So I want to go ahead and use that third party library in my code. So let's go over, over the code that I have right now. So on line one, I'm importing that third party library and on line 17, I'm defining a balance on uh, lines 19 through 27. I have a function called charge credit card that checks if you're broke or not. And if you're not, then it's going to charge you. Um, and then on line 29, I have a function called checkout. Now function checkout is going to accept a purchase info as an argument and it's going to call that third party library function called verify payment information and pass in purchase info as well as a callback. Now the callback is called finish purchase and it accepts an error argument just to check whether or not there's an error. Um, and if so, then it's going to log that out. Otherwise it's going to charge your credit card. It's going to send a thank you email and then empty your card out. Pretty straightforward. So according to the documentation, what's left for me to implement is the purchase info object. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So my username is Stevie, uh, my email is stevie at projecttwine.com, and then my item is going to be some Air Force Ones, some six shoes, uh, price is going to be 70 bucks, and uh, yeah, that should be it. So if everything go is good, this should work just fine. So let's go ahead and run node j uh, node <laughs> node js. We're going to run node on this function. Um, okay, so node checkout dot js. All right, so something went wrong here. So. Clearly, I just wanted to buy one pair of Air Force Ones, but rather what seemed to have happened is that I got charged three times. I mean, I like shoes, but I don't like them that much. So something's going on here. I can narrow down my problem to something probably being associated with that third party library because the code that I've written is pretty straightforward. Let's investigate and try to figure out what the hell is going on. Um, so let's open up that third party library. Um, Let's do it and do that. Verify payment info. And so as suspected, it looks like verify payment information is calling my callback three times. I didn't think Stripe would put out jank code like this, but okay. All right, so admittedly this code is kind of contrived. Deal with it. But this happens all the time in production. And this is the problem with inverting control with callbacks. When we implicitly trust Stripe's verify payment information, we expect that it's going to use our callbacks properly. We're really taking a huge leap of faith there and saying that we believe that they are going to use our callback at the right time, um, in the right manner. We expect that they're not gonna call it too many times, they're gonna call it once, they're gonna call it with the right arguments. If it succeeds, it's going to pass in the right arguments, and if it fails, then it's gonna pass the error, and a bunch of other things. And so this allows for a lot of flexibility, and there's a lot of trust that's going on between uh, me as the engineer of the e-commerce store and 
Stripe library in this case. So how do promises solve this problem? Well, promises serve as a container for a future value. And by doing that, they're in a unique position to force these values to fulfill a sort of contract so that these sorts of problems don't happen. Furthermore, by using promises, we can retain control instead of inverting control because we expect the utility that is expecting a callback to give us event listeners called dot then and dot catch. So instead of us asking the utility to use our callbacks properly and feeding that callback to the utility, we expect them to give us these things that are event listeners. And so we can come to kind of expect a certain behavior from promises. All right, so let's rewrite this with promises. Okay, so let's rewrite this with promises. So let's write verify payment info. That's gonna be a function that accepts a purchase info object. And then we're going to return a new promise on that instead. And this time that's going to accept a function that is going to resolve or reject appropriately. And we'll that's up. So these behaviors will give it a sound there. Um, and so you write behavior of the actual thing. And so we're going to check the person about the human exists. And um, yes, the person about the price exists. And if so, we're going to resolve. And if not, we're going to reject. And we'll reject the correct way to return there. And that looks good. So now this is the implementing side. This is the side that uh, returns that promise. So let's go ahead and consume that promise. And let's erase this at the top. So. Okay, so let's have cost checkout. Okay, cool. So we're writing checkout. Let's not consume promise. Uh, and that's going to pass in that person's logic. So then, um, so it exceeds, and uh, we're going to do just like before. We're going to charge a credit card. That's not a fact. So I copy paste that in. And let's do that nicely. Without catch. And then we're going to console error there. Cool. So that should work just fine after I erase this. All right, let's check it out. Fantastic, so that worked out properly. Now, if you're paying attention at this point in time, you should be saying, obviously that's gonna work. You only called the callback once. All right, fair point. So let's go ahead and try to break this code. So if we go over here, what happens if we do resolve uh, a bunch of times instead, right? So with this time, let's try to buy four pairs of shoes. What's gonna happen? Interestingly enough, this doesn't this code doesn't break it only buys one pair of shoes why is that so let's take a look at the state diagram promises can be in one of three different states pending fulfilled or rejected so a promise can transition from pending to fulfilled or rejected but the important point here is that you can't transition from fulfilled to rejected or rejected to fulfilled or go back to pending and so we're able to treat values that are settled as immutable once values are made, they're there forever. As a matter of fact, if we look, take a look at the Promises A plus specification, which most uh, promise libraries follow, it says very clearly that a promise, when fulfilled, must not transition to any other state and must have a value which must not change. And the same thing goes for when promises are rejected. And this is the beauty behind promises. By following this sort of very simple state machine, we're able to uh, take the complexity out of such crazy async code and make it a little bit more easy to reason about. All right, so in this episode, I wanted to hammer in the point that promises are much more than just syntactic sugar. They're a, a sort of agreement on how to handle asynchronous code. They're a solution to the problem with callbacks, that is the inversion of control. And you can imagine them as state machines. And because of these sorts of things, we can come to rely on promises a lot better than we were able to rely on callbacks. All right, so I hope this helped. And until next time.